Hello. Hello, everyone. How are we doing? Give me one second to set up. I had everything set up until I thought about tickets. Um, because I am trying to get tickets up so we can talk about tickets. But how's everybody doing this beautiful Sunday evening afternoon? Hopefully y'all can hear me. If y'all can hear me, if y'all can see me, let me know. I am browsing Universal's website. I should have everything pulled up that I want to pull up to talk about today. Um, let's see. Horror Nights. Boom. There we go. Perfect. What's going on, Backlog Builder? How you doing? I know you were, you were in the chat early. Let's go. I'm ready. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I'm good. Sounds good. Okay. Sometimes the video might be a bit glitchy. I don't know because sometimes when I'll appear on Chris's streams, I don't know if it, Chris will show up at some point. Probably <laughs> when I appear on Chris's streams, um, Zombie Chris, of course, um, it's kind of grainy and glitchy. And then if it's not like sometimes my streams are usually pretty good. Sometimes they're like weird though. I don't know. I'm seeing it pretty good on my end, but that's also my end. So uh, if it's good on your end, let me know if it's weird. Then. I'm sorry. I don't really have another option for, for it. But I'm going to try to figure out how to calibrate my internet better because up here my internet is not not as good as it could be. But, um, yeah. Uh, we are doing uh, all about all about HHN. Um, all about HHN first announcement. Um, everything we saw, everything we didn't see, what are we looking for, what are we excited about, um, what are we not excited about? Um, just talking about the announcement, I'm going to do a breakdown of the tickets and everything. I, I tried to do as best I could in the video, um, and uh, I'm going to try to do try to do what I can. Um, we want to talk about tickets, um, also the merch. Um, I know that's been quite a divisive um, conversation about the merch, and then um, some other park stuff that I think could have could have implications for Horror Nights or not, um, either way. Um, so, yeah, and of course, also talking about the door video, um, I know that's been something that has a lot of theories on the door video. Who's behind the door? Is it fear? Is it someone else? What do we know? Um, so, uh, I'm going to let I'm gonna let everybody have a few minutes um, to get in here and have some more people get in. Um, and, uh, hey, Ashley. Thank you for tuning into the stream. Um, yeah, just waiting for some more people to pop up, pop in, and we can then we can get started. Um, I liked uh, on one of the Chris streams we had like a, we were talking about food, and that was a good like like setup to talk about um talk about it. So let me just put in the uh, let me just put in the in the in the chat or, or let me know in the chat. What do y'all think of the merch? I guess we could start there. What what is the what do y'all think about the merch? Because it is a very very divisive um, situation. And if you don't know about the merch, I'll show. Um, in, in the stream in a second here. But for those who have seen the merch, what do y'all think about it? Good evening, moviegoers. Yes. Quiet. Um, love my last video. Thank you. I have another video for y'all in here who don't know. I'm going to put it in the community tab. I have another video I'm trying to put out tomorrow that's a version of this. So you're kind of getting a little bit of a preview. So what I'm going to talk about in my next video is a lot about H gen theories. Um, but, um, yeah, so a little bit, and there's some new stuff. Um, I'm going to talk about that. I'm uh, not talking about the stream. Um, but I will leave it there. Um, like the color, not the design. So talking about the merch. So, um, yeah, um, that's interesting because most people I feel like would like the design, like for me, I like the design more than the actual color. Now, I appreciate the color. I appreciate that it's an orange shirt. I guess, I guess let me just show you. Um, so before I get into more of these comments, let me let me pull up the online website. So here is the um, sort of tagline theme merch key art for that we have for at least this merch with is where horror lives with this green um, like spray paint. I love the green and the pink um, colorway, um, blue, green, pink. It's really great. It's really like summery, very nice. And then there's three items. So this is the uh, this is public enemy number one right here. Um, it is this orange t-shirt. Um, 
but yeah, it's this orange shirt right here. Um, and this thing here uh, has uh, turned a lot of heads. And I noticed I was in the park um, yesterday and uh, I was passing through filming. I, I got some B-roll of this um, shirt and uh, just the journal merch. Really love how they went out all out on the merch display uh, this year. Because they could have just easily thrown together some, some merch display. Past years, they put it all on the table. They put a little, a little uh, what do you call it, um, like medallion in the front, and that's about it. Um, but this time, they did a whole display. It was all themed. We could talk about what that theme might be. Um, but um, everyone in the park had a comment about the shirt. Every person I walked past had something to say about the t-shirt. Um, either I like it. I dislike it. I like the design, not the color. I like the color, not the design, as it says here. Um, but so everybody's got an opinion on this shirt. Um, of course, I love it different. Yeah, I feel like that's 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 fair. Um, I I don't I'm, I don't hate it as much as I maybe did initially. I do think the picture this picture is a little better, but the original picture they put out was a lot more of like a peachy pink than orange. This is like a highlighter orange. I know there's a comment here about like. Yeah, a traffic cone color. It is legitimately like this. In the, like, if you see this in person, or if you're going to get it in the mail, if you ordered it online, obviously it's available online, as I'm showcasing here. Um, but if you're in the park or online, it, it is bright. <laughs> it is very bright. Um, and uh, I wonder if it will be distracting in the houses. I, I do wonder this because it does look very like it, it like stands out, and I think that's the point. I think it's supposed to stand out. Um, but I. I I'm gr I'm growing on it. I just wish the color. I wish the color was a little different. Maybe okay. Last year when they did the sea in the fog merch, they did just a black shirt with the blue, and then eventually they did a gray shirt later on in the run. Like they reprinted the shirt, and it was a gray shirt. So maybe we'll get a reprint with maybe another color. Maybe I, I, black's kind of basic. I would have liked like a tie dye maybe like a blue and black tie dye or like a blue and green, like maybe something to match the colors on the shirt. Cause I love the green spray paint. I, I love gr green's my favorite color. So I love the green spray paint and all that. Like I like how it very much pops. Um, that's the things I love the design here. Color's not my thing, but anyway, let's, let's go to some comments here. It's decent. Not really the event merch. I don't think it'll be the event merch, but I wonder if this is the direction they're going in because I feel like this is something that they, they're trying to make Halloween Horror Nights merch, not just merch, just like theme park stuff. They're trying to make universal merch, not just theme park merch. So they're trying to make it a little more broad. And I think this is a perfect shirt for summer. Um, I know, um, you know, I, I know that it's not for everybody, but I've seen people style it really, really nice um, and, and are able to pull it off. Some people are able to pull it off. I don't think I'd be able to pull it off, but, you know, um, going back to this one, I dig the 90s street art aesthetic. I know there's some. I feel like there's another one, uh, some more comments here about like the 90s um, vibe here. And I think that is something really interesting as it pertains to something I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but yeah, definitely want to keep that in mind. Um, I do want to showcase, I'll, I'll put I'll put some more comments up before I showcase um, Missing Scream Squad on the back of the shirt and blood sticky. Oh, I, I, I get so frustrated with the blood sticky letter, like the sticky like print. They did in the Exorcist shirt. Like that last, the both Exorcist shirts, um, but like the main Exorcist shirt that was like black and said Exorcist Believer, um, it had that like sticky, like, yeah, I don't know how it is. If it, you're wearing that in the heat, forget it, it's just sticking. Um, the, the white shirt they put out, the preview shirt has a little bit of it, but it's mixed in with the graphic. Um, but that one is just pure sticky graphic, um, which not a fan of that. I'm tired of all black, needs something bright to stand up at 2 a.m. when it's dark out, you won't see anything. Yeah, I mean. I'm okay with it being different. I, I liked when they did the white shirts. Honestly, I bought both of the white shirts they put out last year, the last of us and the exorcist one Um, the exorcist one. I love, I that's one of my favorite shirts from last year. Um, just because I think it's just such a unique design. It's a great, great looking colors. Um, but this one just, this one doesn't, doesn't do much for me quite yet, but, um, yeah, it doesn't tell us anything about the event specifically. Although I will say this part, um, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to the, the website or the the merch um i don't know if it's gonna take me back there we go um so for those who don't know they also have a hat same kind of design with the horror lives and then this is the uh, the cup the tumbler which i love the tumbler i love it on black i think it's, it really pops 
But I think this art style, because they put a lot of effort into the display, that it's going to be something they're going to keep. I don't think they're going to scrap the art style or like the the aesthetic. I feel like there's too much effort in it for it to just be a throwaway, um, in my opinion, because they literally made multiple HHN logos. With this, there's the logo here, um, which is also, I believe, on the – there's a different – similar but different logo um, used with the basic HHN font with the 2024 being this, like, wild uh, out there, like, collage style. And then, of course, where horror lives and uh, the actual HHN logo, um, which – course i don't have it pulled up yet i'm 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 so unprepared um but um let me let me stop my screen and then i'll pull up this because um for those who haven't seen i love the event logo like the actual event logo um but i think my point in saying this is that there are there are so many let me go back let me share share screen right here Shout out to Michael Aiello um, for having this on hand. Um, but yeah, so this design right here, absolutely sick. I love this. This is is wonderful. If they were to put this on a pin or on a shirt, like do do like like they went really hard with the tarot stuff last year. Um, and uh, I, I I don't know. I like it. It's different. It's wild. It's out there. I know it's not for everybody. And I know the tarot stuff was not for everybody either. Um, I know there are some people that are like, I'm not buying anything. The tarot is just not for me. And you know. I feel it. I feel it. But I love this logo and I love the the design. So um, as I mentioned, they had a cup, they had a tumbler, they had a hat. They're going to have more merch later on. Once we get houses revealed, um, there'll be house merch. Um, this is just, again, the basic sort of, uh, I don't want to say throwaway, but like the basic the basic merch to get you hyped. Um, I don't think I'm going to buy anything. I didn't buy anything yesterday. Um, the tumbler would be probably the only thing. The hat, I would have, but um, it doesn't fit my head. So if you have a bigger head, um, just know those hats are, they run kind of small. But um, I did. I do like the tumbler, but I don't know where I would use. I don't know. Like I have too many cups. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't use the tumbler. Um, I'd rather save the money for other stuff. Um, I brought zero shirt merch. So, Chris, I know you've been open about it on your channel, talking about the merch um, last year, especially. I personally really liked the merch. I will say, not everything was the best there were certainly strong points and, and weak points when it came to the merch but i love how much variety they have that's one thing i will say they have a lot of variety nowadays with just the weird little things they make merch for and i feel like if they were to even go there's even more places they can go right there's, there's more places they can go with the merch um outside of um just what they have so i like the i liked the odd fellow stuff like pretty much everything with odd fellow on it I like those shirts. I do think they're making too many shirts, though. I will say, I think they're making too many shirts or just merch in general, um, which is good for us. If, you, if you're someone who, and for those who don't know this, um, I know, Chris, you know this because you've been at the event for a while, but like other people that don't know, um, usually later in the event, they run sales pretty deep discounts on merch um, on the websites sometimes, but mostly in the parks. So if you're coming in the later in the season, like the last few weeks of the event, mostly like the last week, week and a half, um, you keep an eye out because mo a good chunk of the merch, if not all of it, is on sale. Like last year, pretty much from what I saw, pretty much everything was on sale that they had. Um, and a lot of the merch they had left because they made so much. I mean, 2022 they had kind of supply issues a lot of that stuff sold out but the um some of it stayed but but also like the preview merch went away pretty quick last year there was preview merch into the event like you would go into the tribute store uh at horror nights like even near the event and uh near the end there would still be merch from june july so too much merch, too much. They, they make too much, but I think it benefits us because more stuff comes on sale. I guess I don't know, um, but I, I think they're just going to keep making making more. Merch. I mean, because they realize that horror nights is people will buy so much horror night stuff. I mean, I have a lot of horror night stuff, so I understand. Um, I was going to say something else, and then oh, uh, the main thing for those who are curious, um, the main thing that I notice, and this is a tip, I guess, um, if you're interested in any hoodies at HHN, buy those. As, as soon as you can because those usually sell out um 
I know, Chris, everything except the Chucky bucket, the Chucky bucket, the Eddie jean jacket, and then I think a few like the, like the hoodies and stuff, those sell out pretty quick. Um, hoodies, especially like right when those discounts start, those hoodies disappear. Um, so if you're looking for someone who like wants an HHN hoodie from the parks, keep in mind that. A weird tangent, but yeah, keep keep in mind sales, deals, anything like that for HHN merch in general so um yeah i think that's mostly what i wanted to say i know there's a couple comments here good sure to be sold a hot topic now that's funny because like i get what you're saying like it fits the vibe but i also think like it fits the vibe that they're going with with the merch a hot topic like they sometimes will go and reuse past designs like i know for me i got um hot topic was running a clearance sale and they had the 2017 shirt that didn't say it was weird because it literally was the exact same 2017 shirt. It just didn't say tw- the year 2017 on it. It just had like blank where the where the numbers would go, and they had it for like it was like buy one get one a dollar or whatever. So it was like really cheap, like ten dollars or something like that. So it, it like HHN merch. I don't know what the market is at Hot Topic for HHN. Um, I mean it's it's decent quality. It was about probably similar quality as you would get in the park. Um, I know there's uh, some people that are like. I don't really like them like this one like this comment right here like i get it thin shirts although i will say derek this shirt here the the orange one is actually quite thick it's actually quite like a uh like robust material so i will i will say maybe they're upping the game because it's not a thin like a thin black shirt like even like this one that i have on the mardi gras shirt um it's not like that so just letting you know maybe that's a step in the right direction um last year a bunch of merch sold out for the sale yeah that's true the vecna mug i was trying to think about like there's there's a few stranger things items but not as much as i expected honestly for stranger things being what stranger things is i was so expecting them to sell out of stranger things like everything stranger things um but they had quite a bit of it left um and going insane for this year's merch i'm hoping that is good i mean i'm hoping that I, we can get some cool merch Especially if like things like Ghostbusters come la- comes back, obviously lots of merch potential for that. They've been going crazy with the Ghostbusters popcorn buckets um, for Frozen Empire. I don't know if y'all have seen any of those. So many cool popcorn buckets. Um, love the HHN Hot Topic merch, so cheap and DC. Yeah, I mean I'm, for what it is, especially like, um, and and I like that they do they do more like different designs. And here's here's another comment by Chris. Um, don't forget HHN Universal has an Amazon store. That is also true. They do sell a lot of past event designs. As of 2022, mostly it's um, 30 and 31 designs, I've noticed. Maybe they'll update with 32 designs. Um, but yeah, or sometimes like they'll reuse HHN shirts in the park like for normal daytime. Like they just re-released the Dueling Dragons shirt. It just doesn't say HHN on it, but it's the same exact Dueling Dragons shirt. Um, they re-release a lot of the Chucky stuff. Um, it's the stuff they usually keep around. Um, I'm surprised they don't re-release more monster stuff, but who knows? Maybe maybe when Epic Universe opens, right? Lots of hot topic comments. Um, HHN Vintage. Um, yeah, I mean, those shirts are great. Um, lots of great designs. Oh, those can be quite, kind of expensive. That's my one thing with Vintage is that, like, I get you're spending more for it, but, like, for me, I, the only the vintage shirts that I have, I've gotten for a really good deal. That's my main, that's my main, uh, my main piece. But yeah. Um. Okay, merch just pops out of nowhere. I collect senior glasses when opening for the Last of Us one. Okay, so I, I'm in retrospect. The only place I remember seeing the Last of Us cup was in the tribute store, actually. Um. Mm, sometimes you could see it in the main store, but mostly if you went to the tribute store. In my experience, I saw it there. I was debating getting it because I like the glasses. The only one I did buy was the um I don't have it near me. Um, was the Stranger Things one. Um, I do like that uh that cup. I like the ones that look like like kind of like 80s style. Um, like they did a Texas Chainsaw Massacre one like that. Obviously, all the ones from 29 were all 80s theme. But then yeah, it'll just show up. I'm gonna say this right here: the MIB store, most underrated place to buy HGN merch. Check the MIB store if they don't have something you want. Um, if, the, if the tribute store doesn't have it, sometimes they won't because everybody's going to go to the tribute store. Um, or to the studio store. I'm going to say Men in Black. Even Five and Dime people go there. But people don't ever go to the Men in Black store, I feel like, to get merch. I found some hard-to-find items 
in there. Like when they had the little boo hats, the first time they pulled out the little boo hats and they were sold out for weeks, weeks when they brought them back. That was when I picked mine up at the minute black store. Yeah. Last of us glass. It, it was just, it was all, it was all up in the air um, last year for sure. I wonder, <clears throat> I wonder what the merch I mean, I feel like Ghostbusters would be the big merch item this year if they were to bring it. Um, this is not necessarily a speculation stream, but like, you know, if, if they were to have Ghostbusters, I think Ghostbusters would be the biggest merch draw. Um, but, you know, lots of merch probably made for Ghostbusters. Um, I'm hoping they make more original merch this year because I really I really like that they did that last year. So much Oddfellow stuff. They had that original shirt with all the original posters on it. So sick. I love that shirt. Um. Talking about some of the glasses. Yep. Low-key best item, these 80s, 90s. I'm guessing you mean the glasses. He's talking about $10 for a glass. Those were so cool. Um, and, they're, and they're neat. They're neat collectibles. For me, it was buying the glasses was whether I wanted to carry around a glass in my backpack all night. I was worried about breaking it. Um, that's why I only bought one, and it was, like, much, much later into the event. Like, it was probably right before it ended um, because I didn't want to worry about dropping it breaking it what have you and i couldn't imagine if you're flying like i would just not even worry about it at that point i would just buy it online or then you also run the risk of them breaking it um that might be amazing bathrooms and air conditioning it might be best best air conditioning in the park that is point blank period um that is true about every shirt last year except the long sleeve tarot shirt i think i know which one you're talking about i mean i mean Cool. I'm dope. I, I bought. I got a. I got a good amount of shirts. Shirts last year. I waited until a lot of stuff went on sale. That was my thing. Like after afterwards, I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna spend. I I'm, for the money you would spend, like waiting until they do the seventy, and then I'm a pass holder. So on top of that, like eighty percent discount. That's where it's at. So in my hotel room, turn right there one at the end of my trip. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, okay, backlog builder. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pop this on here. So let's talk about something that is tangentially related to HHN, but not really. But maybe we can we can toss around around ideas for this. So Mardi Gras. I have a Mardi Gras shirt. Right. Mardi Gras ends tonight. Um, tonight is the last night of Mardi Gras. So I'm guessing this is gonna close tomorrow. I'm guessing the Mardi Gras trophy sword is gonna close tomorrow, if not soon. I'm guessing tomorrow because they're going to want to transform it to the Summer Tribute Store. And the Summer Tribute Store has quite an interesting quite an interesting situation going on around it. So, um, they like to tease Tribute Stores at the end of other Tribute Stores. We've seen it pretty much every Tribute Store for a good long while. They've done this teasing, putting a little hints, really, I think, since uh, 2022. Um, so, they've been doing this for a while. So, they just did it recently for Mardi Gras. And let me put this on the screen. So here is our little hint table. Lots and lots of stuff to break down here. Um, shout out to Skipper Haas, by the way. Um, one, one of the best one of the best out there. Um, and uh, he has this really great picture of it. So that's why I pulled it up. One of the goats, Skipper Haas. Um, so let's throw out some theories because we have this here. So let me break this down a little bit. We have, we have a bunch of stuff here. We have a VHS. It's kind of hard to see. VHS is all about Time Ghosts. Um, for those who don't know, Time Ghosts is, is also a nod to HHN, to the Tribute Store last year. There were posters for the Time Ghosts in the Boar Schuster section of the Tribute to Terror, as well as um, they talk about the GERG, acronym, acronym GERG. Um, uh, I can't remember the acronym off the top of my head. I had a picture of it pulled up, um, but then... It went away, um, but um, acronym Gerg, all that stuff is not AZ Trends Tribute Store on this VHS tape. So they're playing with the lore a little bit. They're playing with the Tribute Store, you know, the themes, the, the continued stuff, the characters. But we see here Mega Video Rental and the Mega Castle Arcade. So obviously the Mega Movie Parade is what we're seeing looking to be coming to Universal in the next few months um, for summer so the theory is that this will be leading to the video store i know there's a the, the summer tribute store which looks to possibly be a movie rental store like a blockbuster kind of deal which 
awesome concept. I've always wanted them to do like this movie, like video store. They kind of toyed around with it at Horror Nights. And then I know um, they did, it was a movie theater, but kind of like a similar vibe in the, in the cinema slasher at a knots um, toying around with like the movies and like, and, and like, I know they did a, a movie store facade uh, for one of the Blumhouse houses in Hollywood. Um, so I would have always loved to them to do, to do like a, like a sequel to Slaughter Cinema inside of a video store or something like that. So taking the video store, making that a tribute store, something I'm very hyped about. So mega movie or mega video store. So let's say that's the tribute store theme for summer. What movies will we be seeing? Well, um, here, I don't know if I can I zoom in. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to move my mouse around it right here on the membership card. It says uh, it's number 88. And then on the videotape, it is runtime of 91. Um, as well as the concept of time continuums and time ghosts. Um, my thinking is that one of the films we're going to be seeing is back to the future because 88, 88 miles an hour on the VHS. It also says 1988 was when the movie was made. Um, 88 is a big number for back to the future. And then the, um, 91 being a nod to 1991, which was the debut of back to the future, the ride at universal Orlando. So back to the future nods all around, right? So back to the future one. Now we're not seeing this here. Um, I, actually I have a video on my own Twitter. If you're not following my Twitter, be sure to, or my X, what, what have you. Um, if you're not following my page, um, be sure to, because I, I love to uh, love to post on there. Um, it is uh, it is it's just so easy for me. What is going on here? Yeah, um, there we go. Um, let's let me let me pull up my screen. Um, sharing my screen here. So we have we have um, obviously Back to the Future. Then we have the shark here. I'm going to mute it for sake of this. So we have the shark on the ground inside of the bayou section of the store. I filmed this in the park yesterday. Took forever to find it. Um, it takes forever for this shark to show up. But this, obviously, pretty direct nod to Jaws, right? I mean, Jaws is, is a classic universal. They like to do Jaws whenever they can. Um, and I also did see some new Jaws merch in the park yesterday. So I'm guessing we're going to be getting Jaws. We have Back to the Future and Jaws. Let's pop back over to the desk. Keep going all over the place. Back to the desk. Here we are. So we have Jaws, Back to the Future, and then we have Ghosts. Talks about Ghost Hunters. What is the rumored, been rumored for so long, what the Tribute Sword is going to be all about in the summer? Ghostbusters. Jaws, Back to the Future, Ghostbusters. That's my pitch for what I think the three films for the summer tribute store are going to be. So what does this have to do with HHM? Let's put this comment up here. Um, first part, like blockbuster. And then you go into the movies, kind of like the 2022 tribute store. Y'all were, were in the park at that point. Um, it was a really great tribute store with jaws back to the future and ET this time. looks like they're going to swap ghostbusters in there. Now, what, 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 again, what does this have ties to HHN? Obviously, Ghostbusters being one of the very heavily rumored, heavily speculated and talked about houses for HHN this year, um, having it sort of start in the tribute store, maybe some merch, maybe an announcement around that time, just to kind of trickle it into the parks, and then, boom, getting it at the event. Now, also, let's talk about these tickets here. You're probably seeing a lot of tickets on the screen. You're like, hey, what's going on here? What's going on with these tickets? This is for the Mega Video or Mega, Mega Castle Arcade. Now, do I think this is going to be tied into the Summer Tribute Store? Yes. Last time they did one of these Summer Tribute Stores where it was like a movie, like going back into the blockbuster movies, they had a pretty direct tie to the event HHN that year. Um, they had um, the table, very similar to this. They would drop all kinds of Easter eggs, little hints as to what would be coming. There was stuff for Dracula, which had a house, stuff for Sweet's Revenge, which was the scare zone. What if they use the Mega Castle Arcade maybe as a way to usher in the next tribute store? So the Mega Castle Arcade being maybe the theme for the next tribute store, then kind of teasing it early on. So we start with the video store and maybe we then move to the arcade for the Halloween Horror Nights tribute store and do that sort of thing. So 
that was a lot of me talking. What do y'all think? What do y'all think about this? I know there's a couple couple comments here. Um, do I think FNAF is coming this year? I unfortunately don't think FNAF is coming this year. Maybe in Vegas. Um, that's not won't be this year, but maybe maybe next year in Vegas when that opens. Um, I feel like that would be a big property for them to do. But maybe if they were to do something with this arcade, maybe they could have some teasers. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna pop pop off here, pop the screen off. So what do y'all think of that idea? This is like my chaos theory. Um, again, um, I'm talking about this also in the video tomorrow. Um, so again, y'all are kind of getting some some early early access to that. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, so things going to be retro themed with Jaws back to the future Ghostbusters. I think that that's the direction they are going into. It would make sense because Ghostbusters also is a third party IP. It is not a, uh, universal owned, meaning I don't see where they can just slap a tribute store up for Ghostbusters and be able to fully do what they want to do with a full tribute store. I don't see where they can do that. Even though they might have the rights there, I don't know, maybe maybe not this time. Maybe later on if they keep the rights for a good long while. I don't know the terms and service of how long they're going to have all the rights for. But I think that they are not going to just use it give for a whole tribute store. Let's go back to the basics. Jaws Back to the Future. Both of those next year are celebrating anniversaries, by the way. Jaws 50th, Back to the Future 40th. So I'm sure we'll be seeing those come next year as well. Maybe this is the setup for that um, with the parade sort of bring them back into the park to celebrate that anniversary next year. I love the idea and think it would be great if each room truly represents the property and does it justice. Now, I love this idea too, right? I worry because in the, in the, um, in the, in like the sort of desk scene that I was just showing, it did say this was in the Hollywood location and the Hollywood location, I think does what, I think it's done good. I think they've done good tribute stores there. Um, the Mardi Gras tribute store, I really love that last Mardi Gras tribute store so much. It may be my favorite in that location or the Jurassic Park one. Um, but the Jurassic Park one did something really cool in that it took away from like the let's just recreate the movies and it was more like the behind the scenes. And that's what I was hoping maybe if they were to do a Ghostbuster store, let's do behind the scenes stuff because it's easier to put together and it's easier to utilize in that location. Mardi Gras kind of proved me wrong. I think that was the first time they really got to like spread their wings in that location, try these crazy projection effects, try these crazy pe peppers ghost and atmospheric effects like the old uh, New York tribute stores. So maybe if we get back to that, maybe we get to see different aspects. So for those who went into the 2022, what do y'all think what do y'all think? How, how do you think they will do those properties? Maybe the ones they've already done before, because Back to the Future they did Doc's sort of like lab, like his like um like his garage with the with the big amplifier that Marty you know strums a guitar and it blasts him backwards. Is that is that kind of set? Um, Jaws they did sort of like an Amity boathouse, more themed to the ride, honestly. Um, so what do you think they would do with Jaws? Do you think they would just kind of keep it the same? really focus on Ghostbusters. I'm trying to think of like logistics. I do like their new entrance where you enter over on the, the, the side by Mel's. I do like that entrance better. I feel like it, I don't know. I don't feel like it clogs as much, but that's just me. Um, let's give some comments here. Um, they might be connected. Same universe. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking they're in the same context. And I think that it is going to speak to what's happening with HHN. I think it is. And especially if we're getting a Tribute to Terror house, if that's really going to happen, maybe tying in that stuff with the Tribute Store. Who knows? And that's that's a big if. Um, all connected. Yeah, I think I think it's I think it's going to be all connected. I think that the, I think they're at a point where they're they know what they're cooking with those Tribute Stores. The tribute Store team is absolutely incredible. He deserves all the flowers. Everyone who helps put together those Tribute Stores absolutely deserves the most credit because they're some of, some of the best things that Universal does for the events point blank period. Um, I'm going to come back to this comment up here, but let's, let's go like, uh, they have no frozen empire merch in the store. I'm willing to bet we know what kind of house we're getting. I think they'll, they'll probably would have both. Um, I think they would have original merch and frozen empire, kind of like what they're selling in the park now. Ooh, sorry. Um, 
kind of like what they're selling in the park right now. They have um, the Frozen Empire, um, some Frozen Empire merch, but also some classic Ghostbusters merch. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do either, either and or both. Um, Jurassic Tribute was awesome. Yeah. Jurassic Park style with iconic moments in the film. So Twin Pines Mall. I wonder how they would pull that off inside of a store, inside of a small store too. Very curious. Gives the Orca. Maybe like we're aboard the Orca. Maybe, maybe. Um, the Sedgwick though for Ghostbusters, I think will be a great idea because they already did the firehouse for the 29 tribute, HHN 29 tribute store. So I think kind of reusing the firehouse would kind of be like retreading all the ground. But I think taking us to the Sedgwick would be a lot of fun. Or maybe the library. Maybe the library. Maybe they do a similar effect like they have the ghost in the Mardi Gras store with the library ghost um, that just uh, shh, like roams around, you know, in between the shelves. Maybe, maybe. I think that could be interesting. Maybe mixing the two. I like the best moments of the series or best moment of the first film, I should say. Um, stay puffed. Yeah, again, I, I would love that. I just don't know how they would. I, I wonder how they would do it. I mean, it would have to be something really big, maybe some really advanced projection effects. They did do some cool projection effects for the holiday store. So maybe bringing that back. Um, talking about some other stuff. Let's talk about the weekend, uh, possibly doing another scare zone. Um, yeah, this one's interesting. Um, I'm someone who likes this idea, but I, I'm not a hundred percent. I honestly don't know what's going to happen. I don't feel like it'll happen because I think this is kind of, this will be a very, very big scare zone. This would be a very expensive scare zone. Like it would be like, it would be the scare zone. And I just wonder if they would really want to do a scare zone like this anymore. Cause I feel like they're trying to do the scare zones. Like, I mean, it's been a while since we've seen an IP scare zone, but usually, um, I, or at least at this point, I would expect them to do an IP scare zone. That's a little smaller scale. Um, although I'm not going to rule it out, obviously anything can happen, but I'm not sure about the weekend. I know there's a comment up here about Nightmare. Um, I also don't think Nightmare is coming. I'm sorry to be the, the bearer of negativity, um, but I don't think Nightmare I don't think Nightmare is coming just because the rights for that is just so complicated. And I I think that might have been maybe a red herring or maybe something else that maybe has to do with like related. Um, but it's not Nightmare. It's sort of on the speculation, the maps and everything like that. So maybe um, maybe it's something that they're trying to lead us in one direction to take us down another. Um, so does anyone think it's going to be based on the two movies, the newer ones? Um, I think we've, we've kind of, we, I know I've talked about it before in a previous stream. I would hope it's based on the originals. Maybe mix them together though. Cause they did that with the first house. You had, uh, the Skeletti, Skeletti brothers. I think that's how you say the, the names from two. Um, you had the, some of the ghosts from 2016. Um, of course you had Slimer, Stay Puft, Gozer, uh, Zool, you know, like, like all, the, like all the classic characters from the original. Um, so really just make a big house, maybe include some of the frozen empire, maybe Garaka, or I think that's the name Garaka, um, appears or maybe, maybe, uh, Muncher, you know, like do you do some stuff from the new movies, but maybe focus it on the originals. Like let's have the originals and then maybe do another ghost scene where they all come out. Um, but I would like to see some stuff from Ghostbusters too. I would like to see the slime river, <clears throat> I would like to see Vigo. Um, uh, let's see. I don't think either fan, either film. Uh, Backlog, are you talking about the two new ones, Frozen Empire and Afterlife? Because now Frozen Empire is out. Um, I have not seen it, but um, but yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So you're talking about Frozen Empire and Afterwife. So I have not seen Frozen Empire, so I can't attest to that, but I have heard there's a lot of stuff happening in Frozen Empire. Like there's lots of plots that are all happening at once. And I just wonder, um, I, I know, I know people that liked it. I know a lot of people do consider it a disappointment. I know there's a lot of people that did like that movie, but I think they're just going to pull from everything. I feel like, I feel like they're just going to pull from little bits and pieces from all sides maybe a character here maybe we get to see phoebe and uh phoebe and um and uh podcast and some of the other little characters um that we see from the news from the kids or maybe uh get paul rudd um i don't remember his the character's name gruberman or whatever bring him out and you know like something like that or just use the ghosts and keep the original core four you know that's my thing 
Um, that's my, that's just my opinion on it. Um, but I, I mean, I'm excited regardless because I love Ghostbusters. Many have been rumoring that FNAF is coming this year as a maze, but I don't know if FNAF ever comes this year. They'll add it in Blumhouse Mash Maze. I don't think they'll add it in a Blumhouse maze. I don't think they will because I feel like FNAF is a big enough franchise to carry its own haunted house. I don't think you need to put it with anything else. Now, I think a behind the screams with Blumhouse, like now that FNAF is out, maybe doing like a behind the scenes on that, like having like the movie instead of it being like trailers for, uh, I don't know what, whatever new Blumhouse movie, the new purge movie or whatever. Um, instead of that, maybe focusing it on like actual behind the scenes of, uh, FNAF, uh, FNAF, like showing how, Hey, this is how we did kind of like horror makeup show style. Um, and then maybe have a moment with, with an actor or, or just a moment maybe with the Megans again, um, or the purge or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm curious. Um, FNAF, I think they want to do FNAF, but I don't think they're ready yet. That's what, that's what I think about FNAF. I don't think they're ready to do it quite yet, but I think they might be ready when Vegas opens. <laughs> I think they might be ready when Vegas is ready to open because, uh, that, that would be a big crowd drawer. Um, Draw? No, it would draw, it would draw people in. It would, it would grab folks um, to come to uh, horror unleashed for sure. When Universal Monsters could possibly come to the event this year? Um, I know they are they are talking about a lot about Dracula, um, Dracula's castle, maybe maybe leading into something with Epic Universe. Um, we don't know that yet, um, but Dracula B is kind of the top build pick. I know a lot of people want creature this year. I don't think creatures happening. I think this year is going to be a lot of what people were banking on coming this year. Five Nights at Freddy's, Creature, maybe Nightmare on Elm Street or something that people were super solid on. I I don't think it's going to happen. And I think the things that people are like, really? This like, I'm not expecting this. That will be what what's coming. It's see, already it's looking like an interesting year. I will say this. Um, last year in Hollywood, they had the animatronics movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, I mean, I think they're going to keep the show for sure. Um, I, I think they're going to keep the show. Honestly, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they literally just kept the copy paste show. Um, use the use the animatronics as another kind of in because um, I uh, I don't know for those who have been for those who have been to Hollywood's event. Did y'all do this? Like, I know because I feel like with Hollywood. It's just like Orlando. It's hard to do everything in one night, even though there are less houses. Um, it's hard to do everything in one night. Um, scare zones, mazes, houses, shows, um, especially with the Purge show being like the a big like a big event. Um, so I feel like for those who have been to the event, who actually did this? Because I feel like if it wasn't a big population of people, they could just bring it back just for people that didn't do it last year to be like, hey, here's another thing for you to do, just like the Jabberwockies. Sorry, I didn't mean to say the J word for my Hollywood fans out there. Um, let's see. Many have those speculating. Um, so, Silent Hill or Quiet Place? What I'm, what I'm, have just heard all around, and I feel like just rumors have just been saying is this: it's a quiet place. Like, I like, and I don't know if that's actually going to happen. Um, I don't know if it's going to be um, if that's going to be another one that's like a red herring. Um, but I have Silent Hill. I feel like kind of has gone kind of quiet. Um, no pun intended. Um, but uh, Quiet Place has been one that for some reason people keep talking about it. So, um, no night swim. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm. I don't think they'll do night swim. I don't think they'll do night swim. I think that would also just be really hard to do as a house. Um, what else could Blumhouse bring to the event? Oh, whoa, 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 sorry. I was almost deleted your comment. Um, yes, I saw it. It was always full and then did it twice. There's nothing special. Yeah, I mean, this is totally fair. I think it's just another thing. I mean, considering that they didn't announce it until like a week before the event, I don't think they were billing it as like, you got to come see this. It's just kind of like, hey, here's the FNAF suits. And if you are jealous that Orlando has the Megans, well, we also have the Megans. Um, although I feel like the Megans... I wonder if the Megans would work better in Hollywood because they have a lot more of like 
I, I don't know what the kind of roaming situation is there. If they, they don't think they really have like roaming hordes, but they, but they feel like their scare zones are a lot more open than ours are. So maybe a Megan situation may have worked a little better out there. Um, because they also have those more like like show moments like that. Like the one with the toy maker was really cool last year. Um I'm going to come back, Kai. I know you have this question. I want to come back to it, but I'm going to I'm going to put a couple more comments because I, I want to take a section on this, and then I want to move on to the door because the door is – that is an interesting one. Um, Moira last year's Purge, Evil Dead, Universal, Mass, Holly doesn't have a lot of Stranger Things, but you missed Chucky. I'm so sorry for you because that Chucky house looked absolutely fantastic. Um, BDS and Terror Tram. That's – I mean, I, 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 I that's a pretty good lineup, but I think like – I, yeah, I'm sorry you missed Chucky because Chucky looked awesome, so much better than ours. Um, although I liked ours a lot. Um, do you see that Cartoon Universal was on the tag in Five and Nine? No, I did not see that. I did not see. Did not see that. Um, interesting. Interesting. Um, Hollywood focuses on the making of horror. Yeah, I think they should emphasize that. I think they should totally emphasize that and really focus on that. Um, I think, I mean, because it really, it really started to do like, like I feel like that's was the thing. Like they started doing it with the, um, we call it, um, shoot. I mean, the Terror Tram is a part of it, but also like uh, Universal Monsters, like really focusing on the classics. Like they, they, they did. They were the ones who did that first. Like I mean, I mean, we we did monsters afterwards and i'm sure it was probably planned but hollywood really got the jump start on doing monsters and i and i think they i think while our monsters houses are bigger bigger sets bigger scale i think hollywood i think hollywood really nailed the monsters with the slash music the designs i feel like they really got that i think they got the, the the monster thing um yeah, so, okay, yeah, so I knew what Cartoon Universal was. I didn't see that there was a Cartoon Cartooniversal tag, though. That's quite interesting. Maybe that's a, maybe it's a coincidence, but maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. You never know with Horror Nights, honestly. Um, <clears throat> um, I'm going to go back to a couple comments, and then you, uh, we can keep talking about this, but I did want to answer this comment because this is really interesting. Sorry. Kind of loud. Um, do you think Orlando should have more shows? If so, what would you like them to be? My friend, I would love for Orlando to have more shows. Honestly, I would love for Orlando to have like more than two shows. Um, I think Nightmare Fuel, it's great. Great for those who love it. Maybe not my favorite show, but it's a great addition to have. I would I would be sad if they got rid of it for something else. Um, like if they cut it. Right. So okay, Nightmare Fuel, keep it. <clears throat> Um, Lagoon Show, absolutely. I think I think the Lagoon Show is such a key piece of Horror Nights that has been lacking the past couple of years, or like the past year, I guess. And it was something that I feel like you never knew you needed until they they brought it back, right? Because 2019 was the first year they really brought the Lagoon Show, and they and they brought it with Marathon of Mayhem. I wasn't there that year, but that like that show, I've watched it back. And I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine like, like that show is, is inc incredible. Um, and the same thing with the 2021 um, show. I thought it was cool um, watching it back, you know, maybe not has the same appeal as 2019, but still cool. And then Ghoulish, I thought was a, was a fun show. Um, Lagoon show, I think is key. Um, and then I think they should do something with horror makeup. I think they should do something with horror makeup. So we can have a, a stunt show, lagoon show, and a comedy show. Just do an amended version of horror makeup with um, horror nights theming. Like maybe have it be behind the scenes of horror nights versus like behind the scenes of horror movies. You know, um, <clears throat> or maybe you can even make it like kind of like poking fun, like kind of like almost like a much more a much less. Um, socially like meta hanging like make it like this kind of like a little meta like poking fun at the parks and poking fun at hhn and poking fun at like stuff like that kind of like a horror makeup show does um they'll have a couple meta references and stuff like that like it it's a show um but i think that they that they should do that 
I think that those th that th those three animal actors. I don't think so. I've said this before. I think animal actors as a show would be a bad idea logistically, um, but also you know a purge show in the Bourne Theater or just having the Bourne Theater open. Maybe um, I've seen also thrown around like just showing clips of horror movies, like showing like a like a big large scale horror montage. That's just like kind of an easy thing to get in in and out of. I think would also just be cool. It would just be like just just something cool um, to be in that side of the park. Because other than the scare zone, there's nothing going on inside the buildings. Um, I know they use horror makeup for like RIP and like all that stuff like that. But like if they were to like or they did it for RIP at one point. I don't know if they still do, but, <clears throat> you know, I don't know. But I would like more shows, more shows, please. Um, yeah, huge screen. I think they could just do like a really cool like horror, like the horror makeup show montage would make it longer, make it. Yeah, like play Universal monster movies. Like they do this at um, Mickey's Not So Scary. Well, they'll have like a like a like a what do you call it like a like um they'll use the Philhar Magic Theater and they'll just show like cartoons and it can be kind of just like you just come in and if you wanted to sit down and watch it you can sit down you can get up whenever you want it's not like it's a kind of an ongoing loop so it it offers a place for you to like get out of the the intensity if you're if you're a little overwhelmed but also if it's like it's hot it's crowded you're like i just want to sit down for like 10 minutes and, and regather my 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 thoughts born is a big enough theater to host a lot of people so maybe something like that just as an extra little addition um would be kind of cool um so i think i'm gonna go now to talking about the door. Let's talk about the door. Let's talk about the door. And uh, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, um, okay. Um, so Horror Nights dropped this clip alongside the announcement. So we're gonna move, I think, towards the announcement because I have uh, I have a video I have to edit, so I don't want to be in here too too long. Um, so I do want to talk about the announcement um, and. Uh, Go talk about the door, talk about my theories, and then also talk about tickets. Um, so let's let me play the video for those who have not seen it, um, and uh, we can talk about it. <laughs> and that's it. it. There's not much to it. This is not like it's not like a crazy video, but. It is a um, it is a video. It's one to talk about. And for those who have been on the channel um, for a while, I did a whole video. Um, one of the videos that I think kind of really got me roped into speculation was uh, the static video last year. Really fun uh, video to break down. That was much longer. This is a lot easier to break down because it's only like 13 seconds. That was a 10 minute long video. Um, but yeah. Yeah, let's let's throw it in. What do we think? Who do we think this is and who do we think it's not? So let's start with who everyone's saying that it is and who I do not think it is because I don't think there is uh I I think there's one candidate that everybody says that it could be and I don't think so. Come on, load. It's not loading. Damn it. That was supposed to be a smooth a smooth transition. Hold on. Let me stop it. Okay. I'll let y'all keep guessing while I'm still trying to load this page. There we go. It should be loaded now. Now. Who I don't, I don't think it is. I do not think it is fear. I do not think it is fear. Okay. There we go. We're back. I do not think it is fear. Um, now I know they are talking about it being fears uh fear cannot be contained capital f fear um fear is back i don't think fear is back i don't think he is i think fear is too big for them to bring back for 33 why would they bring him back for 33 why wouldn't they bring him back for 35 let's expand fear for 35 i feel like Fear and Jack are the two characters that I don't see them bringing back anytime soon, unless it is an in an an, uh, an anniversary year. Now, now fear, and also the the idea of this comment: fear comes every twenty years. 
now I know you're saying unless, but I but I do think fear only comes fear. I feel like fear is here. Like he, I don't think he's gonna go away. I don't think it's like a Terror Queen situation where he disappears and then comes back because he was an icon's captured. Like he did have a presence in that house. Um, but I think his reign won't be like I don't think he'll get a full event year until 40, like a full-on event year if they were to do a fear year again. But yeah, I, I don't think it's fear. Um, I, I think that's just too easy, and I don't think that's exactly what it means. Now, I know there's some people saying uh, it's just a creepy thing for promotional purposes. For sure. For sure. This is not uh, a definitive hint. But, I mean, yeah, it could totally be nothing. But this channel is a, is, is a home for overanalyzing little tiny things that don't make any sense and making sense out of them. That's what I love to do here. So while, yes, this is probably true, this is also probably true, I'm going to say let's keep talking. Let's keep thinking about who it is. And I already see some comments in here saying who I think, who they think it could be. I'm going to take this one here because this is not where I was going. But I've been hearing a lot of talk about Lady Luck. I don't know where they – I mean, I think bringing Lady Luck back could be cool, but uh, I don't know. Um, unless they were to really, really reboot her, like like do a full reboot like Oddfellow where it's like – but I don't know why you would because she had such a great year lore-wise. It just didn't work. Like it, it just kind of fell flat, I feel like, lore-wise. Like that's why I don't feel like she's in that camp where a lot of the other characters are reboot i'm very interested in well stay tuned to the channel stay tuned to the channel um i'm gonna tell you all here my next big hhn video is gonna be all about rebooting the icons we're gonna reboot the icons and i'm gonna leave it at that um so those 26 of you who are in here you guys you guys get to know um that's my next i don't i'm still working on it um these announcements have kind of gotten in the way of me working on it um but I do want to reboot the icons. And I, I think that's a super interesting in this context of what we could be seeing because I don't think like um, uh, lots of comments about no icon, um, and no icon. I, I think that's also valid. Um, I've been, I, I, you know, icon, no icon, maybe. Um, but wow, y'all are going crazy on this comments here. All the comments here. I can't even can't even read. I can't even read all the comments. Um, I'm gonna go back to this one. I'm talking about full reboot of the lore is needed. Um, yeah. So so my so my point saying in the reboot, I feel like I should explain this a little bit. Um, I'm not saying to get rid of the icons, or even like really change the characters. I'm saying I think we need more lore to fill in the gaps that we don't have, or reimagine i guess reimagine would be a better way to say it reimagining the icons rather than rebooting them oddfellow was a reboot essentially because he just was never really there he was never there to begin with um so uh reboot yeah rebooting jack's orange that's what i'm saying like they already rebooted them why don't why, I, I i've been in the camp and i've said this and i've said this with my chest i've said there are so many of these icons have been in the same place for two decades. They have not grown. They have not really changed. Well, I'm noticing I'm getting very glitchy over here. Um, they have not really grown. They haven't really changed much. They've been in the same exact spot lore wise. And there's so much we don't know about them. Why don't we learn some more about them? Not everything, not everything, not all the secrets need to be revealed, but I think there's so many places they can go with so many of these things. So that that that's my that's my camp for that's my um pitch for rebooting. But again, I'm not going to talk about that too much because that's a video coming out hopefully in the in the coming um coming months. But yes, going back to this comment, like reboot of the lore because there's so many weird pockets that don't make sense and there are so many things that would make sense but they're just like why 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 don't we connect these? You know, and I obviously I'm not I don't work for Universal. I am not on the creative uh, creative design team for the stories for HHN. But I think that um, 
you know, I think that there is a lot of that that could be happening. So <laughs> there's there's a lot. Yeah, more Albert Kane. Um, bring the Pumpkin Lord back. Like so many. And I wonder, I, I feel like I should do a live stream. When that video drops, I'll do a live stream. When that video drops, I will do a live stream and talk about the reboot. Because I I want to get back to the door. <laughs> it's good, it's very easy for me to get sidetracked. But I want I do want to talk about this. I do want to talk about this big overarching thing, but again, I'll save that for the video. But speaking of reboots, let's talk about one character. Let's talk about one character who I think it is. Who I think could be not maybe not behind the door exactly, specifically, but maybe could be what they're building to seen some people already say it so i'm not going to hold on let me make sure my page is loaded there it is okay somebody we've already we've already talked about him and that is of course eddie eddie what do we think about eddie um i know there's a lot a lot of eddie fans out there um a lot of people in my chat are, are Eddie. Let's bring back Eddie. Let's do Eddie real this time because okay, Eddie has had so he's had such a weird. Him and Cindy have had this weird like on again, off again. They're in houses, they're in zones, they're here, they're there, but they're not really because they they're not like there's never fully committed to to I feel like an event. Um, of course, for those who don't know, let, I'm just gonna. Y'all probably know who Eddie is, but like Eddie, supposed to be in the Icon in 2001, didn't happen um, because of uh, 9/11, and they had to really change everything like weeks before. They already had shirts made and everything, and Jack was back that year. This is Jack's brother, Eddie, um, and uh, Eddie came back. I know he had a house in 20 2006. So 2006 run hostile territory was his house. And then um, we then uh, I think want to say he was back in 2010 for 20 came back in 25 as well as 30. He had his own scare zone. Right. Um, so we, 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 we've seen Eddie, but we haven't really seen him. Right. So could we see Eddie? Maybe, maybe see Eddie. Um, I wouldn't like. Uh, I wouldn't like fully commit. I'm. I'm not on a hundred percent. This is Eddie. I would love to see Eddie. I think there's a lot of things that could be tied to Eddie if they were to. If they were to like say, the icon is Eddie. Looking back, you'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But I'm not gonna make. Yeah, this is this is a slim hopes, very slim chance. I think of Eddie actually coming. But I did want to talk about it because it is something people are talking about. Um, also, we have 33 viewers in the chat right now. Wonderful. Um, okay, so there's a couple people who are skeptical. Pretty cool idea. How would it be executed? I'm done. I'm alone and silent. I do not want to see him at the event. Eddie doesn't really talk much. It's like the body collectors. Like, he doesn't really speak. And, I mean, he has before. I know in the commercial he talked. And I... I think he's, I feel like he's spoken before maybe in the context of the event, but he's not like, he's not like a Dr. Oddfellow. That would, yeah, here we go. Yep. Icon. He doesn't talk. Unless they reboot him to make him talk, which I mean, it kind of takes away some of the allure, I feel like, because the whole thing is he's got the mask on. Big beefy guy with the mask on and a chainsaw. It's his whole, like, his whole deal. Right. Um, but I wonder how they would make Eddie work. Um, I, I think it's just like, I, I think Eddie just, um, I don't know. Now this could be interesting here. Backlog, I know you have a big theory about this. Um, and you've, I think you put it in the last video in the comments, um, that Oddfellow is kind of the, 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 uh, carrying Eddie forward. So, so Oddfellow is kind of the guy who's taking Eddie and then they're eventually going to kind of create a, like a like a like an army. They're gonna do like a civil war thing where they have like Oddfellow and Jack, and Oddfellow's gonna assemble an army, and Jack's gonna assemble an army. Don't know if they would do that. I feel like that's kind of a little bold, especially to whoa. 
Oh, okay. Um, it, it was kind of bold. My, my thing just completely stopped. Um, but it seems kind of bold to, for them to do that, especially putting these characters against each other. I don't think they would maybe put Jack against Oddfellow or Jack against Eddie. Um, but yeah, I don't know if we would get a Jack versus Eddie house because like last time they were buddy, buddy, um, they were hanging out in lights, camera action and, and it was just kind of like, hey, Eddie's here and he's my friend and like all that. Like it wasn't like – I don't think it was like Oddfellow, which is a clear rival to Jack, is a clear enemy. Um, I know some people talking about – also my internet is going crazy right now because um, y'all are blowing up this 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 chat here. Um, Slim hopes expect nothing and reduce your expectations. Listen, okay, I'm going to say this right here. Reduce your expectations and you'll be happy. For me, I I I I don't, and I'm gonna say this right here. I don't say this stuff to like say that there's an event coming. And I don't I don't know you didn't mean this like this, but I want to use this comment to kind of like jump off this point and say, for me, I get excited about whatever comes to this event. Anything can be good, anything can be bad. Things that look great on paper can be really not that great in execution. Things that don't look great on paper could be fantastic in execution. Icons, houses, shows, theming, whatever. So I just I I I think that there's a come there's a level of this for sure. And I think that people should pay attention to this when it comes to everything regarding speculation season. I I I'm gonna, I'm gonna reiterate this, and I've said this in video, I say this in every single video I make about speculation, anything. If you are participating, you have to know this is speculation this is rumor some people use that as a justification to say i can just say whatever i want i don't try to do that that's not my it's not my my feel um but i think that for me i just get excited for the event and and, and i don't commit myself to anything because anything can change even whatever you hear from, even from me or from other creators or from people that claim to be insiders, um, the horror fiends, um, shout out to the horror fiends. They had a great little point in their video on this. Not everybody who claims to be an insider is an insider. Be careful with who you trust. Be careful with what you think. Um, and just have fun, have fun with speculation because that's exactly what it is. It's supposed to be fun supposed to fill the space until the big event it's supposed to fill the space and and keep us talking keep us talking me, me and and all of you guys in here and this is why i love doing this. this is why i love streaming it's why i love making these videos is because i love hearing the wild theories like the fact that maybe we can get eddie back you know like that awesome uh it doesn't happen Cool. It could be something to look back on and be like, oh, how funny is that that we thought this was going to happen? I mean, that, that was my thing. But then sometimes when you get it right, then it's such like a like a satisfying thing because you're like, oh, man, I actually got this right. Like, I remember hearing early rumors about Oddfellow and being like, OK, I'm kind of on board with this. I remember myself making uh, videos about Oddfellow for quite a while before it was like really even I want to say on the map, like just kind of like, Hey, odd fellow, like potentially. And then it being such a fulfilling thing when he actually came to the event, like, Oh my God, we love, we love to see it. Like, um, yeah, sometimes like, and that's the thing. That's why I try to like, I, I'm open to all ideas and, and I, and I just say what I think. Um, I say what I think and, and, and what I know and what I feel comfortable with, with knowing and, and and some things I don't even want to know. That's why I know there's um there's a lot of conversation about um about this year when it comes to spoilers. And uh, for those who are who are already in the know, um, when it comes to tickets this year, unmasking the horror tour, people can book unmasking the horror tour three weeks in advance. Three weeks in advance, up into the beginning of August, and you're like, for me, I, I'm I'm so conflicted because I do like to let the surprise be a surprise. I do like to to um, relish in it and and get excited about the potential of 
seeing a house for the first time um, and seeing it at the event and getting that wow factor. Um, Chris can Chris can attest to this because last year we went through quite a few houses, at least especially for my first time, and like getting to like feel the energy to be like, whoa, like like we're here. Oh my god, look at this! Oh, look at the set piece! Look at this scare! Look at this! Um, all this stuff like. Like look, like look at all of this for the first time. It's such a cool thing. So I wonder. I know there's already some comments uh, talking about what um, opinions on the sort of uh, unmasking the horror tour not going to be online. Totally feel that. Um, and I think that's what happens to a lot of us. Like we make we make videos um, all all through the event, and uh, some people. This I know some people that totally don't watch like the video like after because they just want to be spoiled I, and i feel that um you know I, I remember when i started going when i when i um when i first when i when my first time on hhn which granted was not that long ago um i avoided um uh, watching like a whole lot of videos i mean i maybe did just to, like calm my nerves but um uh no feeling like opening weekend for sure chris for sure and i'm gonna i'm gonna say this i think there's no feeling like going to the event going to the event opening weekend closing weekend any time in between if you are at the event if you're at halloween horror nights for the first time um it is uh it, it it's such a it's such a great experience and it, it's such a great experience to get that first time reaction even if you've seen like for me my first house when i did my first house i don't even remember watching a video of it um and I just did it and I was like completely, I mean, I was terrified, but like, I mean, <laughs> you know, I was excited. I mean, I was like, oh, what's going on here? Um, I for sure won't spoil it. So Chris, um, I don't know if you're, I'm guessing you're, you're disclosing, but uh, yeah, booking a tour early. Um, I'm considering doing it, um, but not posting about it, but and being respectful. And if I were to post about it for the people who are curious, I would obviously be putting big big spoiler warnings like you would know like do not watch this video if you don't want to be spoiled if you don't care or if you don't plan on going to the event anyway go ahead but yeah i think that that's that's the thing is is airing on the side of caution maybe you can't post i'm hoping they don't like limit your picture count because i feel like that kind of would be i think it would be uh i think it would worry me because i'd be like i'm paying for this it's already you can't take a whole lot of pictures anymore um, they're already pretty limited. So especially if they limit it even more, like, I feel like that would be, that would be especially kind of like, like, okay, then why even do this? You know, um, at least do it this early. Um, but for me, I think, um, there are going to be a lot of people covering it and I'm, I'm more, I'm personally worried about my own, like me being spoiled. Cause here's the thing. If I'm going to spoil the house, I'm going to do it myself. And I'm going to get the lights on tour. I'm going to get the pictures. I'm going to be able to go in there and get the whole experience. If I'm going to get it spoiled, I am not about to get it spoiled from somebody posting a picture online. That is not about to happen. If it's going to get spoiled, it's going to get spoiled by me. Point blank, period. Um, but so that so that's just my 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 perspective on it. I'm still debating. Um, I'm not I'm not booking anything quite yet. Um, I'm still debating on whether I want to. Um, and uh, yeah not fun to be spoiled by leaks. Yeah. I, I honestly, it's such a weird thing because also universal does a lot of it too. I mean, the podcasts granted, a lot of the podcasts are lore and that's a whole different thing. Cause you could be, you can half the time, the lore doesn't even make it to the house. I mean, blood moon was a great example of this. They had all this lore, none of it in the house. Um, dueling dragons, same thing. Like it's all build up. It's all to get you hyped, which I think is great. But when they do podcasts of like, here is what is inside and here are the scares. And I think that's kind of cool in some ways to get people excited, but I think sometimes they might go a little overboard and tell you a little too much. And then you have them putting pictures out the day of it's like, okay, well, I don't know. Do the, you want to be first? Because I, I mean, I guess they want to have the first coverage, right? Because everybody wants to be first when it comes to content creation. Um, do it for the, <laughs> do it for the content, do it for, I, you know what? It depends on what y'all want to see. Honestly, I'm really thinking, um, I, 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 it's really what y'all want to see, what, what the temperature is. If y'all will be interested in seeing it, then, and also I want to know what the terms of services are before I book. I don't want to, I don't want to book it and then have it be this like 
oh, you can only take pictures in like super limited. I'd rather just wait two weeks if I'm going to book the tour anyway, book the tour and then get the full tour, you know? Um, but yeah. Anyway, that was kind of a rant. I wasn't meaning to, meaning to rant there. Um, I always bunker down during opening weekend to see live streams since I'm not able to go to HGN hopefully soon. Hopefully you are able to go to HGN soon, but uh, I, I'm going to try to stream from HHN this year. Um, last year, or last year I didn't stream. I tried streaming. For those who were in my in-park stream about a month ago, uh, that was chaos. So I would have to learn a little more. Um, um, but uh, yeah. Um, subscriber filter with HHN. <laughs> um, I know there are people who do like meetups and stuff at HHN. It, here's my thing if y'all see me at any point in HHN, this year I'm gonna try to go more. Last year I wasn't there that often. I have met some of y'all at, at HHN before. Um, and if you ever see me at Halloween Horror Nights, don't hesitate to come say hello. Don't hesitate to ask for a photo or anything. If I have something to get, like, if I have like a button or sticker or something, I didn't have any last year, um, but I'm planning on making some. I'm planning on making making some stuff this year because I I, I feel bad because I'm like everybody's got buttons and stickers and and pins and all that stuff. I'm like, where where where's my stuff at? Um, from the photos I took in the house, I don't think the photos, and that's also the case too. Um, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of something like like the last of us, for example, like you couldn't really take a whole lot of photos in there. Um, the IP houses are usually pretty limited. So maybe they'll make them more IP to make them a little more limited on photos. Like you get maybe a couple of the IP house spoiled, not spoiled. I don't want to say spoiled, but like a couple IP houses on the tour. Um, and because I feel like they, they do that, they do this, uh, the original houses you can take a lot more pictures, but even on the three house tour, I noticed, um, what do you call it? Um, darkest deal was very not picture friendly. I mean, it was also just very dark in there, but there were a lot of rooms that we could not take photos, which I was kind of surprised for being an original. Um, it was probably the most restrictive original um, with photos. Um, Oddfellow, Oddfellow also was pretty restrictive with photos. You can take a pictures of good some stuff, but not everything. Not even a good... The one that they didn't care was Dueling Dragons. They said, you could take pictures of everything, but one thing, one item you could not take a photo of. Everything else is fair game what they told me so i was like so the when you if you watch that video literally like 20 minutes is just dueling dragons because i had so many photos <laughs> that i took of that part um we sold most of the time crash for great clean and deluxe thank you my friend um but yeah no doing a podcast of hhn totally i will do i will do i want to make more stuff in the park this year um doing uh what do you call it um, it's really like atmosphere videos. Like I want to just do it where I just walk with the camera around the park and just film it. Like and not record, like I'm not talking, just recording the, recording the vibes and recording the feel. Because for me, I love watching that back. Like I love just like watching back videos of the event. I'm sure y'all do too. Um, of any given event, whether it was an event I was there or wasn't there for. Um, so, so this one here. Because Murdy does do for I know for creators they'll do sometimes uh, Murdy will do a guided tour with um, creators on a couple houses usually like two I know last year they did them on like Chucky Monstros Monsters Unmasked and I want to say Evil Dead um, so maybe it'll be something like that where it's like it's kind of like an Unmasking the Horror Tour but it's with Murdy I don't think you're gonna get with like A and D on this but like it'll I think it'll be somewhat similar. Um, yeah, um, but yeah, I think that, uh, I think that there is, there's just, a, there's just a lot of stuff with HHN this year that I'm very curious about. I'm very interested. Um, and, uh, I'm, 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 I'm ready for an announcement. I'm ready for some, some house, some, some house information, um, now the question is, what do you think? Um, what do you think our schedule is going to be? Because they're starting tours in August, in the middle of August. They are they the event opens on August thirtieth. What do you think? And this is I'll, I'll end off on this question, and then um, and we'll, we'll talk about this a little more. But what do you think they will do? 
on the announcements because last year they dropped them all at the end of July. It was like <clears throat> it was Chucky, Chucky in October of 2022. Nothing. March. Um, see you in the fog. Nothing. March to June. Nothing. And then The Last of Us. July was uh, Freaking Free Passes and Stranger Things. And then they dropped the rest at the end of July. So, so what do you think, what do y'all think is going to be the schedule this year in terms of like, cause I, th- I think it's going to be, I think we're going to see May, June, July. And I think July is going to be it because if, if they're dropping again in the middle of August, and people wait to book the tours before they see what houses. I mean, naturally, I wouldn't. But I mean, I love this event. I really don't care for the most part. But I I know that that a lot of people. And I I guess I won't say this because for me, I um I booked I booked the six house once I learned what was on it. Same thing with the three. I didn't book them beforehand before I knew any houses. Um, six house I booked it for Dueling Dragons and Stranger Things. Um, and Chucky, but mostly Dueling Dragons and Trainer Things, and then the uh, Three House Tour I booked it for Oddfellow and Darkest Deal. Um, after, after that was after the event started. I was lucky enough to slide in uh, like in the middle of the event. Um, but um, I think I, I think May June for some IPs. I think this is going to be a smaller IP year, so maybe only May June and July, and then at the end of July we get our our drop. Um, Unfortunately, I think that's just the way it is. Um, I think that's just going to be how we how we do things from now on. Um, unfortunately, um, so that's my pick. But what do y'all think? Let's see. Um, I hope they stop. <laughs> I hope they stop the drop. Me too. Um, I would love for them to stop doing this dump. It it for me it it's beautiful when it happens. It's like oh yes give me all the houses and the shows. And then it's a big thing for me when I, when I made the video last year, it was a big video and I was like, Oh my God, it was so wonderful. And then, um, it, and then it kind of just fell off because it was like, okay, we got our drop. Now what, you know, like that, this is my, that's my thing. Um, I would love to see videos for originals. Yeah. And they, and they kind of dipped their toes into that a little bit. They put out POVs, a lot of people don't even know this. They put out POVs for Oddfellow, Yeti, and Dueling Dragons out on, um, I believe it was maybe the YouTube for Oddfellow and then Twitter for Yeti and Dueling Dragons, like official POV like um, walkthroughs. Granted, they're a little shortened, but they are they're universal produced, so it's the best footage you're going to get um, anywhere. So, and then they also did a video of uh, the VR Oddfellow experience, which. For those who haven't seen that, it's really cool. Um, it's one of those like VR YouTube videos, and then he goes into the original houses. I think it's Yeti, Dragon, and then the uh, Twisted Origins. So maybe they're going in the direction of making stuff, original stuff again, but I don't think for announcements. Um, with all the other Universal stuff being announced, like building gaps here and there, we won't notice anything. And I know there's a comment here, Epic. They're doing Epic, I think, every other month. So maybe... Maybe because they seem to be doing Epic every other month at the end of the month, right? We got at the end of January was the initial announcement. The end of March was the um, uh, the, the How to Train Your Dragon. I almost said Dueling Dragons. How to Train Your Dragon announcement. And then I'm guessing the end of May is going to be our next announcement, which I'm predicting is going to be Wizarding World um, based on how, how they're going on the map. Um, so that would put us at the end of September, I think, for Epic announcements if they were to go in that order. Um but I think that if they were to do Horror Nights, putting it maybe in the middle or maybe in the, at the top because they did it at the beginning of April. So maybe they're doing it at the top of each month because I feel like they might have been wanting to do it at the end of March. And then Epic came along and was like, OK, we're, we're going to dominate this week. So we're going to have to move it up a week. Um, see a June house announcement and in July, more ticket and house drops. I think uh, frequent free passes are going to drop in July. There's no way they drop later because of, again, the event starting <laughs> in August, um, August 30th for Orlando. Uh, yeah, it's only for Orlando, but I'm guessing my guess would be that I think the sixth, whatever the next Friday or 
I think y'all open on Thursday. I think oh, I think Hollywood opens on Thursday. Um, whatever the next week is, I'm guessing is going to be Hollywood. I'm guessing you're going to get an announcement fairly soon. I don't know how Hollywood's schedule is though, so don't. I don't know that. Don't don't take that from me. Um, I'm an Orlando guy. I'm just kind of dipping my toes into Hollywood, like cut, kind of scheduling and news. Um, they really don't need to advertise this event. It'll be mid July. Um, yeah. I mean, I. I Unfortunately, I think this is the truth. I don't think they really feel like they need to. I think they would be great if they did um, really make, especially because I don't see them having a Stranger Things this year. I don't see them having a Last of Us this year. I don't see them having a big, big IP. If Five Nights at Freddy's is not coming, I don't see them having another huge IP that they can just rest on their laurels and be like, okay, well, we got Stranger Things, so you're going to arrive at this event. You know, it's like, I don't, I don't know. I feel like this year they don't have to because it's so popular, but I think they should because I feel like this year is going to be a little weird with IPs. Um, I don't think you're going to have those big, like I said, a big grabber this year, at least Ghostbusters for sure. But that's as far as we're seeing on the maps and stuff, that looks like the biggest one for me. Um, I didn't start buying the buying the skating, the single night tickets. I'm telling everything else. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, but I mean, for me again, I'm going to go to the event regardless so I'm I'm in. You already got me. Yeah, locked up. I'm here. I you know I'm not not going to go to the event, um, but uh, I totally feel this. I know people who will say, "Oh, what's coming this year? Oh, this uh, I'm not really going to go this year. I'll go next year if they have something cool." Um, I feel this totally. Um, yeah, I think late May. I think I think maybe early June. Um, I think could be a good time if we're going in the early metric. Maybe early June for Ghostbusters to tie in with the store for sure. Maybe late, maybe early May for let's say Monsters or something else. Like maybe another IP that's something they own. Um, VR House Walkthrough. Yeah. For those who haven't seen it, go check it out. I believe it's on the HHN channel. Bring back the website. I'm not going to talk too much about this because Brian from Orlando, um, Brian and Steph did a great video on this. Um, and they've talked about this to death. Um, so I'm not going to steal their thunder. But yes, please bring back the website. Um, I would love it. I think everyone would love it. I think everyone would want them to bring back the website. All of us in the community. Um, Ghostbusters first. Yeah. Um, I think people, and I think that's, that's I think, their thing with Epic. I think they're trying to do it with Epic and Halloween Horny, same thing. People want to know what's coming. People want to know the terms before they spend the ridiculous amount of money it's going to be coming to this event. So I think that they're going to want to know. I mean, say, hey, oh, do I want to come this year? Um, it's Ghostbusters. It's um, Quiet Place. It's okay. Maybe that's not my thing. Maybe I'll wait until Michael Myers comes back or something because it's going to happen. Um, really felt like I was in the house. Yeah, more videos like this. Please, Universal, more videos like this. If you haven't already clicked off this live stream because I've said a lot of things. Um, Epic Universe. See, my thing is I think the preview center, I think they'll, Chris, I think they're going to open the preview center, maybe not in summer. I think they're going to use summer to be the stuff in the parks. And then maybe right after summer, maybe in that August, September region, like maybe after Horror Night starts, so maybe September, bring the Epic Universe Preview Center to have something else to do in the parks that's not HHN that still gets people talking about Universal and coming to Universal, if that makes sense. That's just my prediction now. Um, end of this month will be Dark Universe. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't think they will do Dark Universe announcement until... I think Dark Universe will be not next, but the one after next. Because I think that if they're going counterclockwise, Celestial Park, Dragon... Harry Potter, Dark Universe, Nintendo. Nintendo will be the last one. Um, that's just my that's just my my thing based on what what it looks like they're doing. Um, a book for HHN. They have what we need. They don't care about house shops. Yeah, like they don't like that's true. Like for us, they know we're coming. They already know they have the clientele. But but I think for the out of staters, for these people, I think they need to at least make the announcement or at least like be a little more transparent. In my opinion, I think this whole like secrecy thing, it can get a little old in my opinion um, when they wait too long, but they do know how to get a site though. So I, I'm not going to say, and it's not against the people that do, because obviously it's, it's a, it's a whole thing. It's not like one person that's saying, we're going to hold back all the announcements. It's, it's a logistic thing. You got a different departments and say, Oh, social media says this or PR says this or marketing says this or 
who oh merchandise oh we got all the stuff ready okay uh creative team says this or we you know on corporate and it's like it's so much stuff you have to go through i'm sure to make these announcements that it's not just like somebody making the post right it's like something that it goes a lot that goes into it um have you seen gb frozen empire i've not seen it yet so i can't answer this question but i will see it at some point i don't know when i'm gonna see it um before horror nights i'll see it um, they're probably going to have the next house announcement in the beginning of May, June. That's what I think. I think at the beginning of the month, because I think it will also, like, I don't know. I feel like it could be a good way to, like, get started in these months. You have HHN at the beginning of the month and then Epic Universe at the end. And it's kind of like you have that, like, where they almost cross streams uh, to get together um, at that point. I think that'd be kind of cool. Um Oh, that talked about Frozen Empire. I already talked about this. I'm way behind in the chats um, just because uh, y'all are really blowing it up, which I totally appreciate. Uh, this is like my highest viewed like stream, honestly, like in terms of people in here. Y'all are going crazy. I appreciate it. Um, I don't have uh, this. Uh, this is a valid, uh, valid um, criticism. Um, this is a valid uh, critique, I should say. Um, and it, uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think that's what a lot of people say. I think this is more for the people who are going to come regardless, um, who are already planning their trip, who have the trust in Universal. Because for me, like, I didn't buy anything. Um, unmasking is the only thing I was, like, looking at. But I'm not buying RIP tours. I'm not buying Single Night personally because I can go to the event um, pretty often. So I'm waiting for the frequent fear pass to drop. But for the people who are coming out of state, who have to plan trips, who have to plan, you know, uh, flights and hotels, um, for me... The only thing I started really looking into is getting a hotel for opening weekend, um, but um, and I'm still trying to work that out, um, trying to get a, a hotel because I I learned my lesson last year. I really like a hotel for opening weekend because it looks like a lot of fun, and I know people who do have it and, and um, have done it. It's really nice. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you think everything is locked in for houses? Um, we never know, honestly, because there have been times where, and I'm, I made a whole video on this, there have been times where last minute something will happen and be like, oh, we have to change it, uh, whether that's going to hell block or whether that's going to purge, you know, like it can be anything like uh, So you never know. Love to how to train dragon video. Thank you. For those who watch that video, I'm gonna doing videos for every single Epic Universe announcement as well. Um, it's mostly mostly Epic Universe and HHM, but I'm doing other park videos and stuff on the channel, bigger stuff um, that takes a little more time. These announcements have just been going crazy, so they've been getting my way. Um, should I wait to buy the multi night ticket instead of a single night ticket? Um, that depends. Are you planning on coming for more than I would say more than like? What do y'all think? Like three, four nights? If you're coming for more than, I think, three nights, I think so. It depends on what nights you're coming, though, because we don't know the prices yet. For me, my ticket without Express was a freaking for plus. Uh, without Express, it was, I think, 260 or um, 270 And uh, it was no Saturdays. It was every day but Saturday. Um, and... Uh, so, and consider most tickets now are in the $100 region. I'm sure it's going to be more. Yeah, it depends on days attending. If you're trying to go on like a weekend, um, may, it depends. It depends because it, it really depends because um, I want to say the the frequent fear, even just the basic frequent fear that had Saturdays included was like 300 something, three, three, 300, 350. So it depends on really like what your tickets are. And I think it's just up to the math because they do range so much once we know we have the multi nights out we uh we i would say i'll look into it um once we know the prices for that and i'll, I'll make a video about multi nights when they come out um if, if you're waiting for that because i know some people like just like just watch the videos and like like here you take the wheel like you you tell me um okay so i want to do two nights if you're trying to do Saturday, I would say yes. Yes? No. Wait, why did I say that? Uh, no, if you're not trying to do Saturday, no. But if it's the other nights, if you're doing like a Wednesday, Thursday, maybe. It just depends on, on what time. It, it all depends on what time you're you're planning if you're coming on September because Russia Fear is typically pretty decent. Um, there's not that much of a gap, honestly, at this point because they're both uh, pretty expensive. Um, but, uh, yeah, again. 
um, uh, be sure to sort of maybe calculate what it would look like. Like if you, if you have your nights already picked out, like, Oh, I'm going to go September 15th and 16th, for example, I don't know if those are actual nights. I'm just guessing that, um, if you have that picked out, then keep that in mind. So when the multi nights drop, then you can maybe say, okay, like, will this work for me? For the most part, I want to say there was like a four, four nights was a good, four nights is a good re, uh, region. Three nights, I think also works too. Um, October 11th to October 14th. So, um, what days are those? What day? What day is October 11th to October 14th? Um, if that's a weekend, that's a weekend in October. Probably, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say probably if you're doing October 11th to 14, although you're only gonna go for the 11th to the 13th because that's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it's it probably is. Uh, I think it'll probably be. It would be best to keep your options open. I'm not gonna say one way or the other, but I'm I will say. Keep it in mind because the frequent fear tickets again are not, they're not out yet. So I can't really say um, the full amount because again, we don't know quite yet. Um, Do the math. Yeah. uh, It's like I'm looking at, I'm looking at single nights because they, because that those are going to be in your upper because that's in the middle of August or August, middle of October. Um, Those are going to be, uh, what 123, 102, and then 92. So it's about two, 225. It's about like three, like, like around like 300, 315, 320 ish area, probably by the time you, you, you do tax and everything. So probably a little cheaper than if you were to do, cause I'm guessing based on again, increases, um, they usually do increases from what I see, like about thirty to fifty dollar increases um, uh, on each individual pass. Um, also, and, and Zombie Chris, if you have more um, knowledge on this, because I know you're already helping people out in the, ch- the chat with ticket questions, um, has been going for a lot longer than I have. So, shout out to Zombie Chris for those who are not following Zombie Chris. Be sure to because he he's he's on it. Um, um, yeah, some multi nights you can't go Saturday. That's what I'm saying. You'd have to get the ultimate frequent fear, and um, that's probably going to be in the four hundred. I could see that being in the four hundred dollars without express. Um, again, that is just my guess. But yeah, do you plan on doing stay and scream? That is another. That's another great question. Um, stay and scream is also an important piece of the puzzle. Um, that you would have to account for because that will be an extra probably $40 on top of your ticket to do stay and scream, which I recommend. Um, let's see. Thank you. Yeah, no, no problem. I, and again, Keep, stay tuned because we're going to talk more about multi-night tickets when that becomes a little more relevant. Um, it's hard for it's as hard for me to talk about it right now because we don't know what the multi-night prices are. Once we know the multi-night prices, then we can talk all about what's the math, <laughs> what's the math, and and what are we? Because now we're we're operating on hypotheticals. Um, so, and I know it's hard because you're like I'm trying to plan it now, but um, but yeah, I I think also if you like. If you keep it, keep in, in contact with the guest services too, because if, if there's a situation um, regarding trying to upgrade your passes and things like that, you can, you can talk with them and, and, and there'll be a lot more help because they're going to know the specific financials um, more than, more than me at this moment, but um, stay in screen with express every night. I know there's a question about me. Do I get an express? I, I don't know because it's, it's just, if I'm trying to do tours and things like that, I don't think I would be getting express on my pass. I don't really need it um, because I because the part of me having the pass is being able to come pretty often. Um, so I wouldn't need express because I mean for me, I can knock out five houses and stay and scream pretty easy um, most time or four eh, three to five houses, which for me is like if if I come to the event pretty often, do my favorite houses, um, do maybe some that I every so often, but, um, every house in one night, if you are strategic, 
let me go to strategy house in the back to die down toward the end of the night um so yeah this is going to be um this is something i do want to talk about as well this year once we get to know logistics a little more and uh, getting a game plan because that is such an important piece of hhn that i think a lot of people do not pay attention to regardless of what you're doing unless you have an rip tour that they are going to do the game plan for you if you are going whether it's with Express, without Express, what have you, have a plan. That is the most important thing. And I think this is also important. How much time you have, how much money you're willing to spend. There's so many options. It's whatever works best for you. But I think regardless of what you do, regardless of what you buy, having a plan is key unless you're doing RIP because RIP, they, again, they have the plan for you. Like they, that's part of the luxury of buying the RIP. It's why they're so expensive. You just can go wherever you want or not go wherever you want, go where they take you. I should say, do all the houses, do all the zones, see the shows, the priority seating, you get all the bells and whistles. But if you don't have that, even with express, people think, Oh, with express, I could just go and hop in every line and, and do it all. Not anymore. That's not how Express works anymore. Just because this event is so big. It is so big. It is so massive. Stay hydrated. I'm out of water. I need to get another water soon. Probably once I leave, once I end the stream. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's wa drink water, water, stay hydrated, stay like eat like food as well. Like you need to like, eat, like, even if you're not eating HHM food, because HHM food is, is like crazy high in carbs and sugar and everything. Like it's sometimes that's not the move necessarily to like load up on whatever crazy food they have. But just making sure you're eating like, you know, if you bring like uh, a good granola bar or like, like just bring your own little stuff just to keep yourself fed because it is easy. I've done it before and I have, a, I've, again, I've been with the past. I've done it before where I've gone hours without eating because I've just been house, 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 show, show, filming, filming, scare zone. And I'll be like, oh shoot, I haven't eaten in like three or four hours. Let me eat something. You know, like you have to take that moment to stop and be like, okay, I need to take a break. That's why the shows happen. That's why they have other entertainment. It's why they have so much food. It's why they have kind of like dead spots. You need to take a break every so often. So incorporate that into whatever plan you have, at least no. And I, and, and I say this, I've said this a million times. I plan on making a video. I want to do, I want to do a video on like, I, and there've been great guides about like decompressing during um, HHN, like where to get away from it. Cause it, it can be very, very overwhelming. Um, just sensory uh, with the sounds and the, and the visuals and the smells and it's just a lot of people and it's hot and you got to just like, know when to kind of step away from that and be like, okay, let me go sit over here. Let me go sit in Central Park. No Lagoon show this year. Sit in Central Park. It's usually empty. Um, sit over by like Kid Zone. Uh, sit over, you know, like just get away from the action. Um, that's necessary, 100%. Um, umbrella, good shoes, 100%, especially if you're going opening weekend. Um, it's It rains. And it rains a lot. Um, so, yeah, bring your tumbler. If you have a freestyle cup, I don't have one, anyone near me. If you have a freestyle cup, um, for sure, uh, getting any drink. I mean, you can uh, – if you buy a freestyle cup there, um, they're great for the parks. I think they're just great for the parks in general. I think it's a great program. It's very cost-effective if you plan on – if you want to drink, like, let's like vitamin water or, like, Powerade. Well, instead of paying $5 a bottle for Powerade, you can pay – uh, 15 for a cup, right? And you can get unlimited for the whole night, whatever you want. That's not alcoholic, obviously. Um, being a little theater entrance. Are you talking about horror makeup? Horror makeup show? Maybe. Um, do you think like there is a time during HN that uh, mid September? Um, Yes, I've also noticed, and this might just be last year, but I think also after Halloween, I think also like the event runs until November 3rd. So maybe those last couple days, because I, like last year, the last few days of the event were insane. The last closing night, I had my most run, like most run 
houses. I literally did probably like 20 something houses in one night because I, I just was ran through houses because it was just, it was just no one there. And I, and this is, you know, you like, even like it, it, it's possible. It's just so weird because it's hard to predict anything. It's hard to predict anything with HHN. Um, <laughs> like really anything with HHN crowds, but I would say scaling back mid September. Yeah. September I think is the best. As long as you go, the farther you go in towards October, it's like, okay. Yeah. Um, but the event's going to be busy every single night, every single night you go, regardless of it's mid September, early September, October, maybe early September might be a little more, won't be bad because it is not starting in September. Maybe that first week of September after opening weekend, obviously, because opening weekend is going to be going to be crazy. Um, but after opening weekend might be a little better because this is the first time it started this early. So what also t- tends to happen too with us, with us, especially not with me, but with um, not, with, I'm going to say not with me because I, I, I don't, uh, I live and breathe this event, but um, for some people get burnout. Like by the time Halloween comes, they're like, I don't want to see this no more. I'm ready for holidays, you know. Um, DreamWorks meet and greet. Um, I'm trying to think because now it's like all walled up. But I mean, yeah, over there in that, like over there by animal actors and all that. Oh yeah, that's where I that's where I like to go. Um, yeah, if you go enough, you can get lucky. But also, not everybody ha- like for me. I, I, I'm very lucky when I do get to go, like all the time when I get to go, but especially what if I go and I'm like, wow, this is a great night. I'm doing a lot of houses. Um, it's just so weird. It's hard to predict. Um, what was my favorite house from last year? So I, I made a video about rankings and it changes all the time. My two favorites were Dr. Oddfellow's Twisted Origins and The Darkest Deal. Right now, The Darkest Deal is my Number one, we thought like I can't stop thinking about that house. I mean, Lost TV and I have a whole podcast. It's it's not active right now. Don't 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 ask about it. But it, it, it is it's it happens. Um, we have just been a little behind, but yeah, that house was so much fun. Like man, what a what a all timer house, once in a lifetime. They would never be able to do that again. I don't feel like they would be able to re capture it again and i think it was perfect for the tent i think it was just one of those like lightning in a bottle houses um and yeah darkest deal odd fellows was great too i think that house the runs in it that i got my last run on that it was like i was like i was uh losh and i were the only people in there so it was like so personal and some people would be like terrified oh my god i can't go in there with one like no other people for me it was just like and i have i have uh character friends who are in oddfellows um and i know there are some of you that watch the channel um that that were in that house because i did get comments um about that um but uh yeah i i i loved oddfellows what a great house um and uh, i mean i liked a lot of the houses uh dueling dragons was another one that i loved um monsters unmasked exorcist um yeah, those are probably my top five, but for sure. Yeah, I see Yeti. Yeah, I, I didn't love Yeti as much as other people did, but but fun house. Fun house for sure. I see why people love it. I see why it won House of the Year. Um, talking about parking. Um, yeah, so any last-minute questions? I guess now we're talking about tips. Tips and past event. Uh, last-minute questions. I'll probably be on for another, like, 15 minutes, like 12, like, you know, 15 minutes or so. Um, and then I'll probably call it. Um, this has been a great stream though. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just appreciate all y'all again. I've said it a million times blowing up my chat. Oh my God. Like, Oh my God. I love doing these streams. Um, I love when y'all are like, like on the chat so crazy that I can't even read it. Um, I enjoy stranger things. And this is coming from a NASA of stranger things. And sure it wasn't great, but for Sam season jam packed, like stranger things for us hit the right notes. I think that this house was it was a, it grew on me a lot honestly it, it was not my favorite um, it was near the bottom of my rankings if I remember correctly but it wasn't my it wasn't a terrible house in my opinion I thought they had done some stuff really great I love the intimate scenes I love like the one on one scenes um, with the with small skill sets I feel like that's what makes Stranger Things as a show great but I think that's also what makes Stranger Things houses so great. The big sets for me, I don't think it really hit as hard as they wanted it to, but I, I, I did enjoy Stranger Things. 
Stranger Things was my favorite. Second was Unmasked. And third was Holidays in Hell. I'm sure I'm guessing you're talking about Hollywood because um, I know Holidays in Hell is a Hollywood. Um, that house looks like a lot of fun. Um, I know there's a comment Hollywood Holidays in Hell should come to Orlando for sure. For sure. I mean, they've done Holidays in Hell kind of with HR Blood and Guts. Maybe if they were to do another HR Blood and Guts, mix the two, like HR Blood and Guts again um, with Holidays in Hell. I feel like it would have a lot of appeal. I think people love that house. I think that house would be so big if it was here, if they did an HR Blood and Guts sequel. Um, yeah, you're talking about Hollywood. So, yeah, um, I know there's a comment here about would you would it be worth it to do Hollywood and Universal HHN? Now, I've only done Orlando. I can't speak for Hollywood, but from what I have seen, I think they're trying to distance it. Um, like, they're trying to make it so that you, like, Orlando gets some some better houses. Um the uh hollywood gets like some houses that are better than orlando it's kind of like a back and forth like hollywood for me from what i saw the winner's chucky last of us better than orlando's orlando arguably maybe stranger things and monsters maybe exorcist depending on who you ask um again though i know there there are uh chris i know if you're still in here you've been to hollywood so you can you can go off about that because you um i know you said the hollywood was a favorite of yours but i mean i would if i could if I could, I would absolutely do it. I mean, a hundred percent. I'm trying to make it work at some point, maybe next year, although Epic's opening next year and might be a little tight. So we'll have to see. I uh, have to explore the country universal tag. Yeah, I will explore it. Next time I go in the park, I'll look. Um, Dylan, shout out to Dylan Thomas, one of the best vloggers out there, especially for HHN um, updates. Dylan, you went crazy last year. Um, uh, just got home, missed this live. Unless you already stated, what's your hot take prediction for this year? Are you talking about houses or about just anything? Because if it's a, if it's houses, hot take prediction. I think I don't know. Like about houses that I that I because I I know what houses that I am sure about, but I don't know. Hmm. I'm going to rest on that question. I'm going to think about that question because I feel like that's a very broad question and I'm not sure if I'm, I want to make sure I'm reading it correctly. I don't want to like, I don't want to say it. I don't want to answer the wrong with the wrong answer. Hot take expected the unexpected. Okay. I see. Um, hot take. See, see my hot, my hot take, I guess would be that I'm someone who I'm trying to think, I'm trying to remember everything that was, was on the map. Um, I mean, my hot take is that I think the IP. Okay, my hot take is I think the IP lineup is not going to be that spectacular this year. From what we're seeing, personally, I think last year's lineup was so strong, and I think that's also like just in concept. The Last of Us, Stranger Things, Exorcist. Even though the movie, arguably, I, I liked it, but I know a lot of people didn't. Exorcist, Monsters, Chucky, five IPs, five super strong properties. Lots of name recognition, lots of uh, fans, uh, fandom. This year, what do we have uh, so far? If it, again, if the if the IPs are here, we have Ghostbusters. Okay, that's cool. Landmare on Elm Street is not my favorite slasher. I'm sorry, this is not my favorite slasher. Um, and that's if that word were to make it. Blumhouse, um, cool. I think Blumhouse is kind of in the middle for me. Um, I think uh, Quiet Place. I'm very nervous about honestly I, it has the potential to be great and it has the potential to be terrible like i think it, it, it literally could or like maybe not terrible but definitely underwhelming i should say um because i honestly don't think i've experienced in my my experience a tear like truly the worst of the worst houses i've had fun in all the houses that i've been through um maybe except for one and uh that one i've it's not chucky i'll say that um but no i think that uh, this year it's just not I don't know. I'm not super. I'm not super sold. Ghostbusters for sure, because I I love Ghostbusters. I rewatched the first movie. Fantastic movie. Um, fantastic film. Classic. I mean, Ghostbusters is great. But we already had it, and I mean, I haven't experienced it. But like for the people who have, I'm sure it's also like okay, like we've seen it before. You know, like that's cool. Dracula, cool. Like I'm. I don't know. I'm just not 100 percent on board yet. With the now originals, originals have they have me, they got me. Like, I mean, tribute to terror potential, 
um, Latin American monsters potential, Greek mythology potential. I'm saying potential because it's all speculated, but um, possibly a sequel house, Sweet's Revenge, maybe. You know, like those things. Um, I don't remember what the other the other one was. I feel like I'm missing. I feel like I'm missing an um, an original. I think there was an unknown original there for maybe mummies for that one. Like, I think that's really cool. Like those are great, great lineup. IPs is the not, they just haven't got, they haven't, they haven't secured me yet, but no, Dylan, you're saying last year was too strong. And I think that that's, I think that's what I'm hoping doesn't happen. I'm hoping that they are able to at least make it. They're going to have to make it smaller, but I hope they don't, they, they understand that. And that's what they sell it as. They sell it as, hey, this is a smaller event than last year. This is not the big follow-up. Because I don't see a way they're going to actually make that work. Um, I'm thinking about um, 31. I have a feeling this year and 31 are going to share more similarities than we think. I think that 31, in my opinion, I think was the better of the two years that I've seen, personally, overall. Um even though I didn't love every single house in 31, I felt like the atmosphere was just insane. It was a more low key event. I feel like than 32, which was like, boom, IP, 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 icon, icon, icon. Here's islands of adventure. Here is, um, uh, Yeti bringing that back. Here is this, you know, like here's Megan and the death eaters and this, it's like, there was so much stuff happening last year that I felt like it was like, it was definitely the eye catching year. But I feel like 31, I don't know, I'm missing 31 a lot. That's my that's my that's my take. And I think 31 was a, was a year that was a little more low key. Came after 30. 30 was like the icon year, haunting of Hill House. You know, even though 31 had the weekend and Halloween, I think that in general, I think it'll be a little more low key. That's just my opinion. Um hot take. I'll take Universal can continue to water on the event. They're more worried about the wow factor, story over scares. I think that's something that you I think that's something that a lot of people have been saying, and I think that Universal knows this. And and I think that's why I say don't just go to Universal. If you like haunts, don't just go to Halloween Horror Nights. I know it's kind of hard to do that because it's obviously haunts are not cheap anymore, especially. A haunt that I will recommend, um, if you Orlando, I would say I like Hallow Scream a lot. I know a lot of people don't, but if you want more of a scare factor, then so if you don't really care about theming, right? As much as as much as um scares and like let me get in your face, let me slide on the ground, let me like spray, like there was a guy spraying people with a little weed whacker or whatever. Like when when you have that kind of stuff, it's like I think like it's a little more like you know, all the scare zones are like pitch black. You can't see anybody. You have still walkers in there. It's a lot scarier, I feel like, of an event. Um, it's a little more low-key, like I said, because it's Hollow Scream. It's not the same budget as HHN. But that's just that's just my that's my opinion. Um, but that's why I say don't just go to um don't just go to horror nights if you're interested in haunts. If you're just interested in horror nights, that's one thing. But if you like haunts in general. SeaWorld, World, Hell Scream, um, Sir Henry's, if you're in the Orlando area, plenty of haunts in the West Coast, Not Scary Farm, obviously, Six Flags, I know has one. I don't even know all the ones on the West Coast. I know there's a lot of them. East Coast, I mean, we talked about it in the last stream, East Coast haunts. Like, support your local haunts, support the smaller haunts, even the smaller ones that are not on the scale of, like, Universal or Knots or even SeaWorld. World, um, other than that. That's, that's my take. Um... The weekend could pull people. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that that will be it. But I just, I don't know. I, I don't see, like, I think this comment. The event needs, I feel I feel like, one or two more IPs. Now, I, do I love these IPs as much? Not personally. But I think a couple big IPs that would get people talking. Other than, like I said, Ghostbusters. Other than the ones that we've already kind of seen before. Maybe one or two that they have not done. Maybe one that they have not done. Maybe I like this question. I like this question. What game you like to see become a house? I've always said Bioshock. I've always said I love. I would love for Bioshock to be a house. 
I started replaying the first game and I was like the first, okay. Uh, 6 billion. I don't know if you're in here or not, but um, 6 billion is another uh, content creator. Um, I know we've talked about Bioshock uh, before, um, but Bioshock, the first, for those who play Bioshock, the first, like maybe hour of the game, you say hour, once you get like from the beginning to the medical center, once you see the first, um, uh, like um, the little girls, I don't remember exactly what their names are. Um, the first one, and you have that choice of whether to save her or um, like use the take of the atom out of her. For people who have never played the game, we're like, what what the hell are you talking about? Um, but like, yeah, the first hour, I feel like doing something like The Last of Us where you take like the first hour or an hour of a video game, I think Bioshock could be great because those sets are realistic, but also like can convey the scenes. I feel like realistic, like obviously it's going to be a big budget. It'd have to be a soundstage house, um, but it would be something that it's not like, like you can manage it. I can see how they could do a version of that um, with the masquerade ball and then the medical center and things like that inside of Rapture. And I feel like you also get the gist you get the splicers, you maybe get some big daddies in there, you get, um, you know, some Andrew Ryan voiceover, maybe you get, um, there's a scene where Andrew Ryan comes on a TV and the, and the splicers come out and they're like banging on the wall, very much like a Walking Dead kind of situation. Um, so I think something like that with the underwater aesthetic, beautiful. Um, lots of great ones here. Um, Simpsons Treehouse of Horror, Call of Duty Zombies, Outlast, Doom. I'm not a huge gamer personally, but I mean, I, I love I love Bioshock. Um, I know I've said it before. Um, Sir Henry's Her Hunter Trail. Yeah, they do a lot of great lore. I think Sir Henry's does a lot of great lore. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm, Sir Henry's is great. Um, Petrified Forest. That's a little... That, that If you're in that area, if you're in the sort of outskirts of Orlando, um, in Altamont Springs, um, Altamont Longwood area, um, that's a good one as well, for sure. Um, Halo, yeah, lots of great games. I feel like that could be done. That could be done into HHN haunted houses. Um, that I think The Last of Us was just kind of scratching the surface. That's why I would have liked to see. I would like to see Silent Hill. I don't think it's going to happen, just for the game factor. So maybe we can be getting closer to some games. I know some people have said. I mean, like I say, Dead Space, Doom, Zombies, like so many great, great games. So many great games with like cool looks because i feel like that's the thing is if you just do like you know there's there's many games that are kind of basic they were like okay i mean how could they really do that as a house um but like a lot of these that have really cool themes like bioshock like dead space like doom or like even like fnaf that's got a cool look to it that could be really cool to adapt to a haunted house some great recognizable characters um i think that is that is the uh, that is the key Um, yeah. Um, there's the poster for the Pooniverse. I'm ready for the Pooniverse. I feel like I should be saying that. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, no, that would be good. That Pooniverse, that would never, that, that would never come to HHN. There's no way they would ever do that. Especially with Walt Disney World right down the street. No way they would ever do the Pooniverse and make it, um. Wasn't terribly impressed with the last of us. I know it's eh, I, I I didn't love it. It was at the bottom of my list. Sorry. I know there's some people that love that house. I, it was cool. Um, I thought it had some really cool effects, some great sets, um, great costumes and makeup. I will say the costumes and makeup were good. Definitely not my least favorite house that I've done. Definitely not my least favorite apocalypse house that I've done. I've I've gone on record and said that I do not like the sentence of destruction from 31. I do not like that house. That is a house that I've said I do not like. I I don't get it. <laughs> that was a house that, that just left me very bored. Um, but uh, yeah, Last of Us was fun. I feel like Last of Us was the better version of that, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Um, all right. Well, I think I'm going to go because I do have to I have to edit this next video. Stay tuned tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, Tuesday at the latest, but I'm really trying to get this one out tomorrow. Um, but uh, yeah, I want to thank you all for coming through. Thank you all for coming into the stream. I really appreciate it. More streams coming. Maybe one at the end of this week to talk about some new stuff. Um, maybe. Um, 
Not sure. But either way, I will be streaming again soon. Um, I want to thank you all again for being so active in the chat. Um, I truly appreciate it. Um, again, stay tuned to the channel for more videos. And uh, yeah, I really had a great time talking to you all. Um, I love doing these streams because I feel like they they allow me to connect with you all, allow me to talk with you all. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you for thank you for popping on. Thank you, uh, everybody. Um, and I hope you all have a great thank you, thank you backlog builder. Um, I hope you all have a great evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you're at. It's like nine o'clock now here. Um, so I'm gonna be signing off. Thank you all again, and I will see y'all next time. Peace out, everybody.